Okay, uh, welcome back. Um, we just, I just uh, filmed the angel tutorial and we kind of made a fairy. I hadn't planned on making a fairy, but um, I had an idea and um, we're going to um, make another fairy. Uh, so if you've watched the um, angel tutorial where I didn't mean to make a fairy, we're going to make a real fairy now and I've never made one of these before but I have an idea so I'm going to take you along with me and we will see how it evolves as it goes. Uh, I'm very much a potter who does that. Uh, I kind of get an idea and just start it and see what happens. So by the way I'm Tiffany Hilmer with Hobble Creek Pottery. Welcome. All right so I'm taking the same slab that I was working with on the fairies and we're going to make this a little easier to use. So let me t just bring this over, our little scrap piece that we had rolled out. Cover this up. Because if you're gonna have a fairy, this one's gonna go in my garden. And you'll find that a lot of potters um, are pretty big into gardens. I think it kind of goes with the being a potter, you just like your hands in the dirt, whether it's clay or soil or whatever. We're just kind of very mental or very intimate or elemental witches, if you think about it. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to smooth this out. This is the texture I had rolled in for the angels. And I'm going to smooth it out because we're going to do something different. So since we're doing a fairy, I'm going to grab one of my... Favorite rolling pins. I do believe I got this. This one off of Amazon, maybe. Um, I've had it again for years, so I would just look for rolling pins. What what you want to find with a rolling pin um, is something that has a deep texture, because rolling into clay versus cookies. There's some really good ones out there that are for cookies, and they don't necessarily work very well in clay. So make sure you get deep enough texture to when you roll it in, it shows. So this one, I'm gonna take an element that I use for when I do my fairy houses. Um, I'm gonna actually, this is gonna be her dress. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut, yeah, her dress needs a butterfly. This rolling pin has a bunch of swirls, a bunch of flowers. It has butterflies in it too. So I'm gonna cut three of them out, different parts of the texture. Ah, let me pull that out. And then we're gonna set this aside. <laughs> I need more plastic. Okay, and the plastic I'm using, oh, let me just grab one out. They're garment bags. So just get yourself some garment bags. They actually work really well for keeping things um, from drying out. So I didn't actually cut real sharp with that cookie cutter. So I'm just gonna cut some of the excess off here. And we'll see how this goes. Maybe this video will make it up. Maybe it won't if this, this doesn't go well. So basically what I had the thought of doing a flower dress, but to make the fairy look like she's wearing flowers. Because if you had a choice and you were a fairy in the forest, wouldn't you want to have a dress out of flowers? I'd love to have a dress out of flowers. Not only would you smell very, very nice, You'd, the colors and the textures of the flowers would be super pretty. Okay, so I'm just taking the sponge, just smoothing the areas. So I'm going to put them together like this. So I'm going to score one side, score the back of the other side, Grab my slip. 
And if you're wondering why my slip is a different color than my clay, that's just what naturally happens when clay sits. It's fine. It's all the really great bacteria and stuff that's in the clay that actually makes the clay kind of plastic. So, I don't know about you, but <clears throat> opening up a bag of clay and that musty smell, I just love it, love it. And that's the red clay showing up. <laughs> when you change clays, even though I cleaned this side and I've told all the students, don't use this side of the table because I'm still working with white clay, it gets everywhere. So, just gonna smooth this out. Okay, so smooth the other side, make sure my joint's really good. And you probably see where I'm going here. We'll see if this works. Take a clean brush and just smooth that over. So I'm gonna stand that up and then we are gonna add the other parts. I like them to overlap. So I'm going to score the back side of one, score the top of the other. Let's see, make sure I've got them whoops wrong way there we go so I need to score the back side of this one and score the top of this one so we'll slip the top and then slip the back and then we're going to join join here just press that I'm just kind of tacking it right now and then very carefully fold that this clay or this clay is very very wet still which is good <laughs> and then I'm going to join that so let's see how this works and then I'm gonna smooth those on the inside this is also if you watch the fairy house I did I've done roofs like this for my fairy house and it's just the heart cookie cutter and it makes a really fun kind of a flower shape with the hearts you could also if you had a um, you wanted to do a four part dress the heart four hearts make a shamrock and so you could do a shamrock so I'm just gonna clean this up in my mind, this works. So we'll see if it works in reality. But in my mind, it works. Ah. Just pinch those together. Because we're forming her dress. therapeutic to do things like this work with your hands very it's such a mindfulness activity somebody's trying to reach me too bad I'm in the studio usually I leave my phone in the house when I'm in the studio it's like I don't want to touch my phone covered in clay my phone is always covered in clay even though I don't bring it out here very much but I'm covered in clay but so but I don't like getting interrupted when I'm in the studio so it's best to just leave the phone in the house <laughs> somebody's really after me might have to turn that off so all right so I kind of I'd have some more smoothing to do but clay clay is actually easier to smooth and clean up when um, it gets more leather hard. 
So I will leave some of the cleanup to that. So I'm going to take my fingers, just make this a skirt, okay? All right, so we've got kind of a, a skirt. Isn't that cute? All right, now we've got to think, <laughs> how are we going to, all right, whoever this is, is the phone is going on airplane mode. I love airplane mode. I'm actually one of those people that when my phone dies, I'm a very, very happy person. <laughs> when I go to Alaska and I am off the can't get cell service, oh, it's so happy. I'm so happy. I can't even imagine as a teenager if, if, um, I know teenagers all want a phone, but man, I'm so glad I did not have a cell phone as a teenager. For one thing, um, my mother did not need to know what I was doing or where I was at. <laughs> so to have a phone where someone can track your GPS and figure out where you're at and what you're doing, oh, that would have been pure hell as a teenager. That would have taken all the fun out of it for me. <laughs> but as a parent, on the other hand, Oh yeah, I loved it when my kids, my teenagers wanted to phone. It was a lot easier to keep track of what they were doing. And since I was kind of a wild teenager, of course, um, I already knew what they were going to be up to. So let's take some clay. Um, I think kind of, this is always obviously a skirt, so now I've got to think what am I going to do for the body? Hmm. Wonder if we did kind of a coil. So if we make a coil. <laughs> so here you go into the mind of um, Tiffany and she's not sure what she's going to do. This actually is um, normal. So let's bring our bucket and let's take a coil. Let's just see what we end up with here. We're gonna make kind of an artistic fairy. So we're gonna pull, basically her waist is what we're pulling. Okay, so I'm taking a coil and since we're doing the flower theme, this actually might work as her head. It might, might not, might scrap this completely. So you guys are along for the ride. This might be really cool or really awful. So I'm just gonna keep pulling this out Wetting my fingers, kind of like how we did, um, I guess the top of the hat of the witches and also the ghosts when I pulled them. I'm gonna try and get that pretty thin at the top. All right, so let's go ahead and clean the slip off of this. But if this is going to be her waist, or let's see, let's go ahead, let's split this. Hopefully you can, nope, you can't. You can't see what I'm doing here. So we need to move those guys off of here. Put that, you know what, let me grab another bat. The clay sticks to my um, wheel, this little cake stand. This is a little cake stand. I have a banding wheel over there too, but um, I like the, I need to get a banding wheel that's taller. I like the tallness of this. So I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to cut this and then I'm going to slice it. And then I'm going to open it up. Okay. And then I'm going to try to make little, kind of like a stem, you know, that hooks onto a flower. So I'm going to 
just pinch it until I'm happy with it. Just get it down to a couple of points. Hopefully this works. Works in my head. <laughs> my head's kind of a scary space. There's a lot of things going on in that head. All right. So if I, so now I've got these points. So let's open those up. We're going to score them. And then we're going to score the top of this. Okay. We're going to add some slip. And then we're going to put this down. This might be super cute. So basically what we've done is we've made a upside down flower. So now we're just going to smooth this into the shape that we want down her dress. Her skirt, I guess. This is her skirt. We've made a flower skirt is what we've done. Come in here with my favorite little wooden tool and press that into the skirt of her, her flower skirt. We're just kind of sculpting. When I do this next, I think I would only I'd cut it into thirds, not fourths. Because you know I'm going to have to do this again. You come up with an idea, you make it once, and then you automatically know what you're going to do different the next time. So, in fact, I want this to be more delicate, so I'm going to cut some of this away. We'll just take that off. Let's see, make, try to make them somewhat the same size. I usually go nuts um, in the spring. When spring gets here, all I want to do is like fairy houses and stuff for the garden. So usually I'm way into holiday mode by now. But this is a weird year. Since I'm getting new needs this year, this is a weird year. So I didn't get to do all of my fairy houses and stuff in the spring because I wasn't feeling good because I had the the botched knee surgery in March and took so long to recover from that technically not recovered since they get to redo it um, I didn't get my fairy house fix so and of course the minute I start feeling better I have to go start all the surgery and healing all over again. But next year, I'm going to be like the bionic woman. It'd be kind of nice, you know, when they start replacing your body parts, if they actually gave you a little extra spring in your step, you know? I'm pretty sure another 20, 30 years... They do these knee surgeries or hip surgeries or... Heck, I've even had a fused ankle. I've lived hard. I've had fun. <laughs> I've played hard. <laughs> anyway, so let's see how this works. So, then if I come up... Cut off that stem... And then when you're going to uh, curl, you want to wiggle and encourage that clay to do what you want it to do. If you don't sit and wiggle, 
that clay will unfold because clay has a memory so it will unfold so I definitely made a flower I don't know if I've made a fairy and I don't know if I want to keep that kind of like an artistic head <laughs> or actually put her put a head on but we're gonna add wings and then we'll decide take some more clay here need to smooth out my texture and I do have a butterfly um, I bought this cookie cutter and hold on just a second and I can show you where I actually got it because I actually just got this one so this is where I got it hopefully you can screenshot that we'll find out I've never used her cookie cutters before we'll find out what I think right here on film <laughs> so with this kind of cookie cutter since it does have all this detail in it I have got cornstarch in this little salt shaker so I'm going to put a lot of cornstarch out there because I know I'm going to have trouble with that all the little parts in that cookie cookie cutter releasing from the clay so let's see if we can do this and I'm actually going to turn it over to press it out on the edges see how I did that so I just turned it over because I know that this is going to give me a design that's not going to cut through on the inside but I don't want to press it too deep that I can't get the clay out so we'll see how this works well Let's see, how are we going to get the cookie or the clay out of this? This might be too detailed for clay. See if I can press it out carefully. If I can get it started, maybe I can get it started over here. I need to get an edge. Otherwise, this is not going to work. I'm going to turn you off for a second while I fiddle with this. Okay, I gave up. <laughs> so, it's a really great cookie cutter, um, but does not work very well with clay. I'm going to um, try it later. Maybe if I did um, some cooking spray, it would work better. So, but for now, we are going to roll another frosted butterfly into the clay and use a different cookie cutter. So, this is uh, Sharon Hoppy design, the frosted butterfly. Absolutely love this. So, that's one of her wings. So we're gonna use that other cookie cutter that I used in the other video. And we are gonna cut out this butterfly. And then if I get that to work, I'll let you know the other, because that's really a pretty, pretty butterfly. I probably pressed it too far into the clay. So, Again, I need to do some cleanup here, but my clay is super soft still. Love it when the temperatures allow me. We get so hot and dry here in Utah that the temperatures don't allow me to do stuff like this in the summertime because our humidity is like zero and uh, our heat is intense. All right, so... And that does look weird, doesn't it? So, let's do this. Let's
We're going to cut that off. Kind of give her a neck, I guess. And let's see if it works this way. We're going to have to do the ball for her head. So, let's see if we can get this to work. Let's shave this. Let's see. Let's. Smooth this down. Score the top of that. Score the bottom of that for her head. Hopefully this will look okay. Right now she's looking kind of funky. Maybe she needs some little boobies. Maybe that'll... You know what? I'm going to take these up. Give her some little movement. Smooth those down. It's kind of a fun challenge. I actually really, really enjoy a challenge in the studio. How to make something. Potters tend to be somewhat of an engineer of engineers because they're you're making stuff in clay. You gotta figure out structure, foundation. All of that, how you're going to um, keep it upright without falling down, keep it from cracking, um, how it's going to be, in a lot of ways, functional. This obviously isn't functional, other than it's going to be, it's fun functional. I do a lot of fun functional, <laughs> because it's going to be looking over my garden. I'm going to put, a, put her in my garden. So I'll do the same type of hair that I did with the witches. You could also, um, I know the polymer clay, they have a small extruder that does little tiny coils. If you want to mess with her hair that way, you definitely could do that. I've done that in the past. Um, let's see, where's my front? Probably, who knows? So, let's score the head. Score the heart. Oh, and if you haven't watched any of the videos, this is a funky heart shape that I got years ago somewhere. Um, here is the, the code. If you want to try and find it, do like a screenshot and um, a Google search with that. Maybe it'll help you find it. I think she's too tall-waisted. But we'll see what happens here. I could definitely see that she's going to get a few iterations, different, um, maybe this one does need arms. We'll see what she looks like with them, um, with the uh, wings on. Maybe it's these points, they're not flowing well. Let's go ahead and score. Whoops. Don't want to drop the knife. Score the butterfly. Yeah, you only need three points because I just scored the heck out of that last point on her bodice. And if you can see on the camera, I have cat hair in my clay. <laughs> Got a cat in here on my slab roller, but I actually 
don't worry about that too much because um, it burns out. So I'm going to press her wings. Actually, her wings need to come up. I probably should put it next time, note to self, put the wings on before you put the hair on to make sure they're kind of in the right position. Her back looks great. Her front looks kind of funky. So I'm going to... I love the back. I'm going to bring her wings up just to... No, I'm not. I'm going to put them down. Plus, if I didn't have her hair on, it would be a lot easier to clean up. Well, you'll have to let me know what you think of this. And if you have any suggestions on different iterations of doing this. Because this could be a really fun project to do. Probably just messed that up by doing that. Hold on. It's amazing what a good... This is a makeup brush. It's a good makeup brush that ended up out here in the studio and it's actually one of my favorite smoothing brushes. She looks like a fairy. But if you put her, if you could see her, visualize with me. <laughs> I visualize her like on a stake in the garden. Some arms might work. Actually, if you did a little, actually, let me do this coil. You'd have to do, I just want to set them up there. They'd have to be so thin though, to scale wise, that I'm afraid that they would, granted, this is really rough. Yeah, I don't like it with the arms. I never do. You'll notice my witches don't have arms, my angels don't have arms. Nobody has arms. They're all armless. They have wings. So anyway, I'm going to leave her like that. I think she's got potential. I love the back. Absolutely love the back. And I'm thinking that I will put her on a stake in the garden so it looks like. Or, you know what, you could put a hole in the back, you know, through the body and hang her. Ooh, that's a good idea. So you could actually hang her. I think we're going to do that. Well, I will put a hole in her when she stiffens up. It's always easier to do a hole um, after it's leather hard. Otherwise, uh, you risk damaging it. But she is super cute. I'm definitely going to play with this idea. Anyway, you'll have to let me know what you think about <laughs> this little fun idea that I had and if you have some suggestions I'd love to hear them. This could be super fun to go with the fairy houses. Might have to make them smaller too to, so they could actually fit in the fairy house. Anyway thanks for joining me. Um, if you've um, subscribed thanks for um, that and if you haven't think about it and uh, we have a lot of fun here. Um, have a great day and I'm gonna go sit in my hammock and enjoy this beautiful fall day maybe get um definitely going to do a refill and maybe get a good book all right have a great one we'll talk to you later okay i'm back so we're going to consider this an epilogue i think i figured out her dress okay so i've made another skirt same way i did the other one so now i'm going to take my little leaf pattern um, or my leaf cutter, and I'm just going to cut three leaves. If she has a flower for a skirt, it would make sense that she has leaves for the bodice. So I'm not actually scoring and slipping this together. This clay is really wet. So I'm going to take those leaves and I'm going to pinch them together. 
and make her bodice, okay? Let me actually stick this inside here. So I've got something to push against. Then I'll pinch that top closed. Then I'm going to come in here and score the bottom petals of the leaf. I'm not even going to score it to the skirt. Skirt's wet too. So I'm going to pick my front and um, Let's see, probably there. So I'm going to push this on to her skirt so this kind of gives her a little bit more of a body. <laughs> I wasn't really happy with that last one so I've been playing around. Of course I've been playing around. I got all this stuff to do for Christmas. And what am I doing? Yeah, I'm doing fairies. Why not, right? I work well on deadline. I've always worked well on deadline. I was definitely always one of those um, students in college and high school who had a paper due, had two weeks to do it, and didn't even start it until the night before it was due. Sometimes that works to your benefit because you don't get so bogged down with what you're doing um, and think sometimes if you think about things too much um, you actually it's a detriment sometimes artistically I believe this is my own opinion opinion by Tiffany theory by Tiffany however you want to call it <laughs> um, that Sometimes if you just think about it for a while, know you got to do it, let your subconscious work on it, and then when you sit down to write it, or um, make it in this case, it just magically flows out of you. It's like the universe has um, become one with you. Okay, so now we've got kind of a... A bodice. I'm going to cut the top of this so I've got a place to put her head. We'll make her a little head. Um, I did do one with arms, so I will show you the one with arms. I don't know, like I said before, I don't really care for arms. I don't know. I just so this one I might not do arms. We'll see. But I will show you how I did the arms. I mean, it's they're simple to do. It's just I don't know. They just look odd to me. It's just. Kind of a personal preference type of thing. If you want arms, do arms. If you're good at arms, do arms. Technically arms are just a bent coil, but I don't know, they just, to me, just look funky. So I'm just gonna smooth out the lines in her face because she's a fairy, so she never ages. No wrinkles. She's immortal. At least my fairies are immortal. Or they, I think, mythology, they live for a very, very long time. Anyway, so I already have butterfly cut out. So I want to see how this looks. What do you think? I like that better than what I was doing before, but... Let's see, where do I want her? I don't like that part. Let's see, we need to cover up that part because her back's kind of sunken in. Well, except for if that's her back, then that's her front. Oh, that'll work. Okay, so, you know what? She might be getting arms too. All right, let's see here. If I put her wings on like that, I just don't want her to go too bridal. And I think... My other one went a little bridal. So let me grab her and I'll show you what I mean. Because I gave her a flower to hold because I'm definitely not going to do hands. If I do arms, I'm definitely not going to do hands. But there's her with arms. And I think because I gave her the flower, 
she went a little too bridal for me. So, but maybe if I gave her a bug, like a ladybug. Um, so let's, this is how I did the arms. Seriously, there's no secret to, or no special thing to do in arms. I just don't like the way they look. So, you roll out a thin coil. Kind of loop how long they need to be. That's the thing is they're always either the scale is always off or something. I don't know. Maybe this is something I need to work on. So I made a coil and I'm just going to loop them. So I'm going to score the back. Score the back. The Doppler slip. I'm not going to do a lot of slip there. Let's see. Where is my front? <laughs> I guess we're gonna make that the front. So the back of her neck, so if I if I do the arms at the back of her neck, it kinda with doing it this way with one coil rather than two, you end up doing the shoulders at the same time. Okay? So and then to do arms, you gotta have an elbow. See, and she's already cracking. If you don't have lines on your face, you're definitely not gonna have lines on your arms. So, make sure that that we're going to. When you're doing little tiny places to score, your knife works well or a needle tool. So we're just going to have her, this actually would be kind of cute if you wanted to add arms to the um, angels that I did too. So she does look like she has a bigger bicep on the one side, but we're gonna, <laughs> going to, um, these are fantastical creatures, maybe she does um, have a bigger bicep. Um, so clean that up, I've got a little goober there. Okay, so now that I have the arms kind of set, so let's go ahead and add her wings, her little butterfly wings. So score that. And then we're gonna score, whoops. Yeah, let's not take her head off when we score her. Score the back. that up pretty good. I actually like looking at her when I put the wings on. Rather than just doing it from the back here. So, so press that in. And then I'll clean up this slip here. I always have a sponge here to wipe off the slip that I collect with the brush and get the water off. If you have too much water sitting on your clay when you do this, it'll break down your clay. And uh, the parts that you just slipped on, slipped on will, will eventually just, actually not eventually, like within a few minutes will fall off. So if you have too much water, that's actually, you don't want too much water with your clay. You just want enough. So always have a sponge nearby that you can be wiping. And like I said, I'm probably going to spend more time cleaning up in a few hours when she's um, a little dry. Um, whoops. So let's pick her up and actually pinch those wings so I'm not pushing her forward. She does kind of look flat chested now, though. <laughs> oh my goodness, I tell you. But this has been fun. It's been, I mean, it's always so much fun in this studio. Okay. So let's see here, see what we got. Sometimes I just dip my finger too and just kind of smooth. I need to smooth her wings. All right, so if I'm gonna do a ladybug, I like the idea of a ladybug because we always want ladybugs in the garden, you know? 
I love ladybugs in the garden because they're eating all the aphids and all the bad stuff you don't want on your flowers. We want a little ladybug. Oh, that's probably the perfect size. I did show how to do a ladybug in um, the fairy house. One of the fairy house videos. I've done two now. Two different kinds. An easier one and a more complicated one. So you want to have an oval. Ladybugs are fun. Grab a needle tool. So once you get your oval, okay, you want to first do the head. You just come in, round that off, okay? See how I did that little tiny head? It's kind of hard to do when little tiny piece of clay. Split the back for the wings, and I kind of just do that. And then you just do a diagonal for the little butt. And that is it. And then take like back of a brush or whatever and put in your little dots for the ladybug, for the wings. And that's all there is to it until you go to glaze them. <laughs> and then if you want little eyes, I always do little eyes. Sometimes I do a mouth, sometimes I don't. Usually when I do a mouth, they come off a little scary, a little sadistic. So I'm actually taking the needle tool, roughing these guys this up because her little tiny arms are now going to have to hold this butterfly. So add some slip. Actually, I don't want that much slip. That's too much slip. It will actually um, make my arms weak. So, I'm gonna, and her arms are drying out pretty fast, so let's go ahead and make it look like she's holding that ladybug. And I'm actually gonna press that against her body. I am kind of concerned that she has such a flat chest. <laughs> I wonder, is it too hippie of me to add a couple of flowers right there? <laughs> oh my goodness, I tell you, I cracked my, crack myself up. I actually really like um, my own company so um this isn't um i can entertain myself i've never been one that needs to be around a lot of people i can entertain myself fairly well which um may or may not be a good thing you know what if i wonder if we did except for i wonder if i do a flower where's my flower Ah, uh, in this video, you are getting a glimpse into my crazy brain. So if I do a flower, we can maybe hide the fact that she has no chest. Nope, I don't like that. But if I take the flower, kind of cut it in half, I wonder if it would look weird if she had like a collar. Yep, that looks weird. Maybe let's cut that down a little bit, see if it'll work. But it does make her go a little 80s. And it makes her look like she's got a beard. You know what? She's just a young fairy who has not developed yet. <laughs> let's give her some hair. All right, let's move on. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So. I'm going to do, she's smaller than the witches and the um, angels we did for the hair. Oh, we didn't, did we do angels? I don't know. I'm losing my mind at this point. So I'm going to still take this funky, um, but I am going to actually cut it down. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. But I'm going to cut cut this down just a bit on one side and thin it, follow that line and thin it. So I just took that and I just did that. Just to give her less hair, but I still like this shape a lot for hair. So we're still gonna use it. We just needed to cut it down a little bit. Cut it down to size for their cute, tiny little fairy. So. So score the inside of that. She is almost done. 
I think these will be really, really cute hanging from fish wire from something in the garden or sitting on stakes amongst the flowers or even just sitting amongst the flowers. Okay, so I scored her head, scored her hair. Love how that heart shape in the front just naturally makes, gives her just a great hairdo just from the get-go. And then I like to do a little flip, you know. So anyway, that's so far the how I um, fix this. So now you can kind of see scary how my mind works a little bit, but uh, that's what you get when you making things. They just evolve. To me, everything just kind of evolves. All right, so there she is. And I think she's adorable, adorable. All right, so now I'm done. <laughs> Well, probably not. No, this is the beginning of the fairies, but I'm done for now with this video. So I am really looking forward to seeing what you're gonna do with these. All right, thanks a lot, guys. We will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.